But if there's going to be a meaningful, aggressive, multi-day, maybe even a multi-week bounce, I think we have to test the bottom of the range here. And I know we're still... Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the Access of Trade.com Weekend Update Show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Again, crazy week uh, in the market once again. Um, you know, the market hit uh, a little bit of, um, you know, a little bit of a history lesson. This is uh, the longest decline now in the NASDAQ names, uh, the longest decline since the dot-com bubble. So for all you guys who ever wondered, what the decline was on growth stocks, right? At that time, the internet craze was, was uh, on its kind of a last leg on its infancy stages. Um, this is it. I mean, this is the worst now decline since 2001. We're going on uh, seven weeks and it doesn't look like, or at least doesn't feel like uh, there's an end in sight. And the, the, the crazy thing about this is if you look at the market, right? If, if you look at the tape, we're about 30% off. The Nasdaq is about 30% off uh, all-time highs which is you know which is crazy that's a big big number and all this happened in less than six months which is you know really eye-popping uh and pretty pretty aggressive but again you could you could still make the argument and i think that's the big key i think you could still make the argument and i think this is where all the perma bears uh were were, were trying to um uh, voice their opinion majority of these stocks should have never been where they were and, I, and, I, and again it's it's a very fair assessment it is after the fact but it's a very fair assessment so if you look at names for example like a upst and you look at their like all-time you know all-time highs again you could turn around and say does it did it really deserve uh to be at 400 right did a name uh like tdoc really really deserve to be at 300 right and zoom and granted zoom uh, was one of the leaders in the stay-at-home movement. Uh, they definitely served a purpose. They still use a service. Like we use uh, Zoom in the in the webinar. But you know, my, there's Microsoft Teams. There's uh, there's Metric, there's uh, Cisco, and all that all the other stuff. So the question is, was that market? Was the market the real market that we saw on this whole massive rise on on growth names? Or is this the true nature of the beast now? And the craziest part is, like I said, it's only uh, month five, six uh, going into it. And the, the one thing that, um, the one thing that, well, first of all, CNBC officially said we briefly went into bear market territory in the S&P. Okay. I, I mean, I think we have to redefine what the word bear market is. I, I think uh, points on a chart and percentages off highs and lows uh, shouldn't be the barometer of what a bear market is. It should be a uh, sentiment of how stocks are affected by supply and demand, but that's a whole uh, different story. And th there's a lot of common denominators uh, in this market. And it, it's, you know, you'll see it over and over again every single week. And a lot of new traders, because you knew it, just because you don't have the screen time, uh, you won't see it. And the, the market is trading in a very specific cycle. So if you look at the cues, right? If you look at the cues, for example, you'll notice the same thing, right? You have this linear line. This obviously still is a very, very important level. If you've been watching these broadcasts uh, for the last several months, you, you understand why the 50-day moving average is so important. We keep on getting rejected, and that will completely break this cycle of selling. Again, every single time, at least in the first early stages, once we broke the 50-day, it tried to get above six, seven times, and it finally just... Uh, lost, uh, you know, lost momentum, and obviously a lot of prices started to decline. But there's a lot of common trends. Number one, if you guys are actively trading this market, you'll notice that any single move, okay, that is interpreted as strength. And again, we have to, we really have to redefine what the word rally is, okay. If a stock goes down, you know, seven weeks in a row, and the stock is up three dollars the next day, is that really deemed a rally anymore? I think we have to start using different words. Um, but if you if you notice all the big green days, for the exception of the one real rally we had uh, that started on March, excuse me, April the fifteenth, every single rally was either uh, Fed driven or some random algorithm kicked in something that the whole day was literally put in on one candle, probably towards the end of the day. So if you look at the last you know meaningful rallies, even even the one on Friday into the close, this is all on one bar. This is a Fed bar. 
Uh, this was a fed bar. There's a lot of big fed bars in these channels, but ultimately what happens is all these rallies that are coming off one candle, the next day they get engulfed. They literally get engulfed within the first two candles because if you look at the downward volume in all these days, they're about 90% of the day drifting, 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 and any short covering, whether it's uh, manual or most likely program driven, is going to come literally in the last half hour, 45 uh, minutes, last 10 minutes of the day, and put the scoreboard that it did very, very well, ultimately to give it back uh, the next day. The, the one thing that I continue to um, reiterate, especially if this is your first go around uh, in a bear market, um, any gap ups, right? Any gap ups that you have in a bear market, and that's where we are right now, okay? Uh, any gap ups are more chances, 95% of the chance probably even more than, I'm just being a little bit more on the conservative side, if you can, if you can think 95% is conservative. But the majority of times, anytime you see a gap up in the market in a, in a bearish scenario, it's going to get stuffed because stocks, there's, there's no room. After a sell-off, right, they're either gonna get, get back into where they broke down or get back into 60 minute supply. Either way, they're going to get rejected. That's why there's no such thing as a gap and go uh, in a bear market. Gap and go scenario is only a bull market scenario. Also, buy the dip only works. And we've been talking about uh, buy the dip only works in a, in a, in a, in a bull market. Okay, it, it, stocks that are strong, that are opening down in lower rising 60 minute support, they're the ones that trap the shorts. There are no shorts to trap. They're short, that's the whole point. They're short in a, in a trend, trending market that's going lower. So there is no buy the dip. You can buy the dip and you know, th theoretically, for you know, fishing around for a longer term entry. That's a whole different conversation for a longer term view, but there's no such thing as buy the dip uh, in a bear market because again, if they go and they start breaking down uh, big levels, you're gonna start going lower. And that's exactly what we've seen on the queues in every single uh, major level. You can see literally every single major level that it put in a low, right? And rally back, it took, that, took out that low two, three days later and started a new cycle. And that's exactly what we're seeing over and over again. And even on Friday, for example, right? The Nasdaq was down, you know, two, three hundred points. The Dow was up five hundred. The reason why it bounced, you see, guys, you see this lower Bollinger Band, and this is why I, I love Bollinger Bands. I've been using them for years and years and years. It, it's 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 a high probability, right? It's a high probability area, at least for that juncture, that the market is going to to hold and snap back. It's like it's like a rubber band. Remember, I've used this scenario plenty of times. So imagine the lower Bollinger Band, right, as as a rubber band. So if you squeeze it out, right, if you stretch it out and snap your fingers, it's gonna snap back. And that's exactly what this Bollinger Band then is. You can see it every single time it hits the Bollinger Band, at least it gives a little bit of a bounce, right? So for stocks to go lower, they need to get below the Bollinger Band. So that's why every single time you see a stock stop at the Bollinger Band, it needs the next day to take it out, right? And that's exactly what we're seeing. So obviously this 280 level on the queues going forward is gonna be a big number because again, if you look at the weekly chart, right? If you look at the weekly scenario, I still believe if there's going to be any meaningful aggressive bounce. I'm not talking about one day, maybe two days, but if there's going to be a meaningful aggressive multi-day, maybe even a multi-week bounce, I think we have to test the bottom of the range here. And I know we're still, you know, 28 points away on the queues, but if for us to look at a longer term view, I, I think we have to at least to test the bottom of the range here. I, I, again, all these intermediate channels that tested, right? And it seemed like, oh, okay, maybe this is a good area of support. It, it, they kept them going lower. So if this bull market, again, it, it, you have to still deem it an overall bull market because look what we've done for the last seven years, right? So this, you know, 255, 260 level long term is going to be the area. Because if you notice here, right, this is a little bit of a history lesson. If you go back to January, February, March, if you go back to March 2020, last time we tested, right? Last time we tested this, this uh, brownish, bluish line, right? Look what happened, right? It bounced. Even here, right? Even here. This was uh, August of 2015. You see that? It's the same like brownish line. It bounced here as well, right? It bounced here as well. So at least, if nothing at all, forget about even the 260. If nothing at all, I think at least 270, right? Maybe at least 270. That would be the third test of this brownish line, as you can see here, bounced three, two separate times. So at least, I think that at least the 270. Let's not get extreme for the 255, 260. But at least I believe for, for us to get a, a, some sort of a hard landing, kind of a throw the baby out with the bathwater, I think we at least need to see uh, this 270 level. If you look at the SPX, 
kind of from the same broader point of view. I think this 35, 60s levels, you, you can see it. You can see the dynamics as well, right, guys? Uh, last time, let me just show you again a couple of times uh, we retested this brown level, which is the rising support. Uh, the last time, let's see here, it was January 2016, we bounced. Here's another one, right? You see this brown, blue, bluish level? The next time we tested this bottom level was 2018, December 2018. What was this? This was, oh, this was, uh, I was about to say, what was this? This was, uh, this is uh, COVID, right? This was COVID, but once it reclaimed, right? It went through, but once it reclaimed, it started to rally. Uh, so I, I think we have to wait to at least 3563 to start looking at a, a hard landing. It, it, again, one of those scenarios, throw the baby out with the bathwater. And the Russell as well, uh, the Russell as well, um, you know, I, I think it needs to get down to the bottom of the range here. So, you know, we have room to go down. And, and again, that's the most important part. Don't don't try, and we, we, we've, you know, we talked about this numerous times, you know, don't try to pick a bottom or, or you know, try to outsmart the market. Again, this is only month five, you know, going on month six, of a potential decline. Again, we've been we've seen bear markets have lasted two, three years. So it, it, it'd be very, very, um, it'd be very, um, it'd be very prudent not to try to to put in a, 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 an area. Look, if you want to start investing long term and put some money to work, at least use technical areas that we just kind of talked about, both on S and P uh, and the Nasdaq 100 to kind of test out, uh, kind of test out uh, your theory about a potential bounce. But don't get uh, don't get too uh, don't get too smart. Another thing that that needs to for this market to you know to kind of stabilize. Number one, the volatility has to go away. Again, there's a big difference between average true range and volatility. The stocks that we trade, the Apple, excuse me, the Teslas, uh, the Apples, the Facebooks, the Amazons, on the video Netflix, they have average true range every single day. Big big ranges. Volatility is down 300, up 200, down 400, down 200. That's that's ridiculous. Nobody wants to trade in a volatile market. You can't hold a position. You'll get stopped out on both. You'll get wicked out every single time. So you don't want volatility. You want some sort of stabilization, whether it's down bias or up bias. We want some, um, we want some sort of organic market that you know once in a while the market could be up, you know, 50 points, down 50 points, up 70 points, down 30 points. You know, you don't need five, six hundred points. One and a half, two percent moves every single day. That's scary. That's called anarchy. That's called a bearish scenario. That's called uh, violence, right? The market wakes up and chooses violence. That's what it is. So you need the market to kind of uh, stabilize that. The most important part is, you know, in, 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 and I, I think a lot of you guys in the webinar kind of finally realize this: the days that you see are split up, right? For for the market to have a premium day, like like Friday was a very premium day. Everything went down. Um, and again, whether you're trading long side or short side, your premium is going to be somebody else's garbage. So again, not everybody fits that mold. But for, for in order to have a really good uniform day, okay, all these stocks need to trade the same way. So in other words, if you see uh, Microsoft strong, but Facebook weak, Apple weak, but Tesla strong, Netflix strong, but NVIDIA weak, Google strong, but Amazon weak. That's disconnection, right? That that you're guessing. That's called the chop factor. That, that's called the pigeons, you know, pigeons are, are trying to uh, trying to get a, some, some sort of bread in the park when somebody throws uh, some bread in the air. Those are the days you want to avoid because what usually happens is those days are going to have contraction, a lot of contraction. You're going to see a lot of chop. That's why when you saw that sell-off on Wednesday, you guys remember that sell-off on Wednesday, 1,200 points in the Dow? Right, about you know about what five percent on the Nasdaq, and then the next day, what happened? They tried to dead cap bounce it, right? So we went green, red, green, red, green, red, green, red. Ultimately, uh, you know, went up, you know, hundred points, and finally to lose thirty points. That's called a dead cap bounce. That's called uh, an inside day. That's called a disconnect. Again, some stocks green, some stocks red. Those are the tr and again, I don't care how how uh, how experienced or not experienced you are. Those are the days you kind of want to turn around and go, ah, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Because, because again, they need to go in a tribe. And if you saw Friday, everything got destroyed at one time, right? There was nothing strong. There was nothing weak yet to the last hour. The market rallied. What we talked about in you know, the, the, the fashion aggressive rally towards the end of the day and, and the market turned green. So the scoreboard didn't look as bad. But, you know, we look, if you trade it on Friday, you kind of know. I mean, Tesla finally got absolutely manslaughtered. We've been talking about that uh, 680 level you know, in nausea, right? Finally took out 680, went all the way down to 633. You had a monster breakdown in Google, right? Before it, it came back down. Amazon is, um, 
I think this week, man, this thing starts losing 2100. It's going to start moving lower. But the, the one thing that you saw this week that's that's really scary, right, from the consumer point of view, how aggressive retail was, right? So you saw huge misses this week, right? Kohl's, uh, Target, right? Walmart, uh, raw stores, right? And, you know, on and on and on. And even if you look at Amazon the last several quarters, again, it's showing people are not spending money. And that's a big deal. So usually... Uh, you'll have uh, some sort of disconnect between Wall Street and Main Street. But when you're seeing retailers that are traditionally, you know, the staples of Main Street America not doing well, well, then every single sector has to be uh, put on notice. Again, it's, it's one thing if a stock like, you know, Snow, for example, right, that goes down, like Snow or, you know, Letter U, you know, these software cyber stocks, you know, it's not really part of your day-to-day -day life. But when, you know, when uh, Bob Jones and his wife from, you know, to, to Topeka, Kansas, don't stop going to Walmart because, you know, energy prices are going up and they're not shopping there anymore. That's again, that's a big, big, uh, big red flag for Main Street America. So, I mean, going into this week, I, I think you're going to have the same things, right? Monday, because we rallied, you know, because we rallied into the close. If you look at a lot of charts going into the weekend, you'll see everything's in the middle of the ranges, right? So there's a, you know, there is a shot we have a dead cat bounce on Monday, right? I, I think the key level, if you're a bull and a bear, you have to kind of watch this level here of 295, right? Uh, if you're a bull, you desperately need to reclaim 295 uh, on the upside uh, on the Qs. Uh, obviously, if they trade there and they get rejected, that's a, you know, it's a good area. If, you know, if you are a seller into supply, which again, this is kind of what the market is. If you are a seller at supply, what, you know, again, watch that 295 level on the Qs in case there is a snapback on Monday. Because if they get rejected off the off the 5, 10 day moving average, it's going to start rolling around. So for the bulls, you watch this 295 level on the close. If they could close above the 5 and 10 day moving average, you know, maybe this thing gets a couple of days worth of legs. Uh, for the bears, obviously 295 rejection or the bottom of the range here of 280. And again, it, it seems like a lot, 15 points uh, on one candle, but that's what volatility is. This is where the aggression is. That's my whole point. You know, volatility is not good. It's not good for anybody. You want average true range. You need orderly buying and selling. You don't need anarchy, right? You definitely don't need anarchy. So it's very, very important to understand that. Uh, for the SPX, uh, when you look at the SPX this week, again, you know, here's the same level. You know, you have that 3970 level is a big battleground. Whoever can, takes control of the 3970 level in the SPX is probably going to have some legs uh, for the rest of the week. So if you are a seller in this market, that 3970 level is a battleground. If it gets rejected, you might want to entertain a short there. Obviously, the big macro level continues to be this 3810, which is the low uh, for Friday. So, you know, you're going to have a scenario this week, pretty much like last week. Um, you're going to have two pretty good premium sessions. And what that means is going with the trend, right? Going with the trend, you're going to have a lot of up, down, up, down, up, down. Again, if you're a professional trader or aspiring professional trader, you want to kind of avoid those days. I know the market's open and somebody on social media is screaming, there's always something going on. Okay. But the point is, you know, you're not going to get emotional value, you know, for your stock to work, whether it's long or short, you either need greed or fear. Correct me if I'm wrong. There's no greed in this market because the market's selling, right? That's the whole point. It's selling. Nobody is chasing. If you are chasing, you take advantage of those people are chasing by selling into supply, uh, if that's your thing, right? Selling into supply on any gap up. So again, we are still in the bear market, 4% uh, uh, down for the NASDAQ. Uh, this week, the Nasdaq was murdered on Friday, uh, you know, before that rally. So think about what it could have been. We are again; these are the hard numbers, guys. We're thirty, almost thirty percent off uh, all-time highs, and now we are in a seventh, seven-week uh, losing streak, the longest week uh, since the dot-com bubble. Does that follow through? Does that continue the theme? Do we finally stabilize a little bit and start ne neglecting? Uh, some bad news, some sell signal. We'll see. You know, we'll see. Again, we adapt, right? A again, if you if you Google the word trader, right, versus investor, it's it's like a zebra versus a zebra versus an elephant. It's two different things, right? A trader trades both sides. You know, you look at the theme, you collect the data, and you hope that data confirms. An investor, well, you buy and hold and and pretty much hope. And, and again, that's fine too if that's your thing. Guys, have a blessed weekend. Uh, just live your life.
smile. Again, don't worry about the little things. If you are an investor in this market, again, we've been talking about uh, hedging your uh, portfolio for months and months and months. Ever since that first week that we closed below the 50-day moving average, you've been watching this broadcast and you've properly hedged. You're, you're, you're a lot better off than a lot of people who are just sitting there and hoping and praying. Uh, if not, for the rest of you guys, have a great, great weekend. Uh, enjoy the weather. It's going to be a heat wave here in uh, the Northeast. In New Jersey, it's going to be like 95 degrees today. Uh, so go enjoy your life, right? That's it, guys. Have a great weekend. God bless. And I'll see you all on the field. On